So I put them back. I said, you know what? Mike talking. I'm going back and they just ain't going to have no pencil because I ain't paying $4.99. God said, put it back. Go argue with God. <laughs> so I get in my car and the spirit of God begins to humble me. The spirit of God begins to work in you. The spirit of God begins to check me. I said, mm. A song just popped in my head. There's a song called Protect Your Neck. And, and, and Method Man said, it's the Method Man for short, Mr. Meth. Moving on your left. But what he was saying was moving, your, your heart is on your left side of your chest. He said, I'm moving on your left. God began to move on my left. God began to move on my heart. And God said, now go to the dollar store like I told you, son. So when I text the woman of God, wasting my time, right? Wasting my own time. When I text the woman of God, I said, well, do you have any sharpeners? The woman of God said, no. And all the pencils at the dollars at the at, at ShopRite didn't have, they didn't have, they had all these pencils, $4.99, $2.99, $3.99, all these elaborate pencils, mechanical pencils, everything, and, none, and not one sharpener inside the whole place. Come on, that, don't let this fly over the top, top of your head. All you need is God. God said, guess what? What you need is not here because you think you want to do what you want to do. So you say, go to Pathmark. I'm going to take you to Pathmark. I'm going to let you be praying, speaking in tongues in Pathmark. It ain't going to change it. There's no sharpeners there. There's no sharpeners. So then when I realized that I couldn't depend on Pathmark, I had to depend, depend on God. Greater... <laughs> See, <laughs> some of us get to a place where we worship people so much, or we need food and shelter so much, or we need a, a, a good night out so much, or we need a, a, a stiff drink so much, or we need a companion so much, that we'll let people manipulate us, rule over us, use us and abuse us, and misuse us, and we will never stand up for ourselves. But Mike, you're talking about pencils. What are you talking about? But God said, I told you to go to the dollar store and you're standing in Pathmark. And Pathmark doesn't have the sharpeners. You can't write without a sharpened pencil. So I go to the dollar store. I go to the dollar store and I said, ma'am, do you have pencils? She said, yeah, they're a dollar. She looked at me. <laughs> I felt so small. But I said, let me see the pencils. I said, let me get four. I said, guess what? This is the power of God. I said, let me get four packs of them. I didn't know how much they cost. I didn't know how much it was. But I said, God, you told me to go here. You're going to make a way for me. God, you told me to get out the bed of adultery. You're going to make a way for me. God, you told me to stop lying and cheating. You're going to make a way for me. You told me to leave the strip club. You're going to make a way for me. You told me to love my wife. You're going to make a way for me. So I get to the counter and I... I get to the counter and I look at the pencils and sure enough, they're a dollar. Sure enough, and guess what? It already had the lead already on it. I said, come on, God. I said, I'm going to, to thank God in the store. The lady looked at me like I was crazy. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for being so disobedient. God said, everything you need is right here. Look at it. Pass it around. <laughs> For a dollar, it already had the sharpener. It already had the lead already in it. God says, I am your provider. I am what you need. You don't need anything else. You don't need a sharpener. You don't need to pay $4.99. He said, you just need to listen to me. When will you listen to God? If he told you to stop living in sin, would you listen to him? If he told you to stop being manipulated, used, and abused, would you listen to him? See, we think we say yes. But there's a lot of abuse, abused women and men that don't get out of those relationships. So the answer clearly is not yes. Right? I'm just, maybe I'm wrong. You go to, ask a police officer. I was talking to a cop the other day. He said, there's one type of family that I hate meeting. He said, I don't, I don't mind meeting the drug dealers. I don't mind getting into a shootout. He said, but I refuse to go to a house of domestic violence. He said, because here I am beating the husband down, locking him up, throwing him against the wall, telling him he can't be beating up on women, and here the woman is beating me up, punching him, get off my husband, and she got two black eyes. He said, I'm sick of that. He said, I feel more endangered in that scenario. God is all you need. 
And when you begin to listen to God, you're not depending on a sharpener at Pathmark. You're not dependent on a man to pay your bills. You're not dependent on a woman to pay your bills. You're just not dependent on it anymore. I'm hoping that this is encouraging some people to stand up against the abuse, the lie, the pressure. I hope this is hitting home because this isn't what I wanted to do. I thought I had something powerful, but God said, you better listen to the Holy Spirit. You can't be afraid to stand up. And the answer is always inside the scriptures. If you have any doubt, read what Jesus said. He said, if it happened to me, it's going to happen to you. But he also said, when I begin to take keys to hell, death, and the grave, he said, you can do the same thing too. Jesus said, when I begin to speak and things begin to move, you can do things too. He said, greater works. Come on now. Greater works. He didn't say less. He said greater. Jesus said, whatever happens to me, he said, you're going to be greater than me. I'm exposing the lie of these Jesus said, greater works shall you do. He didn't say, you're always going to be underneath my feet. My job is to empower you so you can have your own church. My job is to empower you so you can get out of the bed of adultery. My job is to empower you so you can get out of lying and get out of not typing and get out of being angry and always so mad. My job is to empower you. Not to keep you down. Not to put my foot on your neck. I got to go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. Just so people won't call me a liar. You a liar, Pastor. You said you was going to go there and you never went there. What was so decent about 2 Samuel chapter 5? Well, I'm going to show you very quickly. Because I only got a few minutes. I hope when you walk out of here today, you're going to say, I know Jesus wants me to be better. I know Jesus wants me to succeed. And I'm not going to take one little small piece of the scripture to make you believe. Read the whole thing yourself. You don't have to listen to me. Read the whole thing for yourself. He never said greater among thee is, I mean, the, the servant will never be greater than master to control the people. He never said that. That's not, that's just not what he meant. So maybe I'm tipping you. Maybe I'm snitching. Maybe I'm snitching on the liars. I'm snitching on the people that want to control you. I'm snitching. You, 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 you ever notice the one thing people hate? Uh, you, people hate snitches. We hate snitches get stitches, right? <laughs> snitches get stitches. Because they don't want anybody to see what they're doing in the dark. They don't want the light to come upon them. They don't want the brightness of God. They don't want the glory of God. They'd rather have you being molested in the dark than coming out of the marvelous light. They'd rather have you being a jump off in the dark than marrying you. What is that? I'm just exposing the truth. I'm just telling you. I'm, exp- I'm just, just telling the truth. You have to stand up for yourself. Let me show you how to do that. And then we out of here. If you give me five minutes, we'll be done. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 9. I know you've been there for about 40 minutes, so I thank you for being patient. But I'm not going to go if God doesn't say go. I'm not going to go to Pathmark when I'm trying to be at the dollar store of my life. I'm not trying to go over here to adultery. That's where I want to go. But God's saying, be faithful, son. I'm not trying to go over here to not tithing. And God said, you got to tithe, son. I'm not trying to do what Mike wants to do. Don't do what you want to do. You must do what God says do. Because God's going to have you a nice little pencil with a sharpener. It's already mechanic. It's, it, this has everything. This is the perfect pencil. <laughs> but God says, I am. He said, man, does not live by bread alone. He lives by God. I'm knocking stuff down. I'm so hyped. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 9. I'm going to actually read verse 8. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and kills the Jebusites, 
and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief captain, or he's going to be the man. He's going to be the man. David said, whoever go in there and capture that city, he's going to be the man with the master plan. Wherefore, they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. Now, look at what this verse says. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. That's why we say the city of David, son of David, King David. It says and he called it the city of David. So David began to name and he began to declare some things. He began to say, listen, he said, that's what this is what the Bible says. With the soles of your feet tread, you possess the land. So he said, well, if I'm walking over here. I'm going to call it the city of David. If I'm walking over here, I'm going to call it Hebron, uh, where, where all the great um, uh, uh, prophets were, were buried, Rebecca and all them. And if I walk over here, then I'm going to call it this, or I'm going to call it that. He was saying, with the soles of my feet tread, I possess the land. So when I walk there, I now proclaim it. So if you want to change your life, you want to change anything in your atmosphere, you want to change being oppressed, you're tired of being misused, you're tired of being used for sex. I'm not going to say it. We got mostly adults here. You're tired of being used and abused for sex. You're tired of being used and abused... In whatever kind of way, by your job, whatever the case may be, the Bible says you have to begin to let your feet do the talking. So David went over here and he said, okay, I'm here. I'm going to call it the city of David. But watch, it's something very, 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 very important. And David built round about Milo inward. That may not seem like a big thing, but it said he built a fortress around himself and then he began to build it up inward. And what I hear God saying is that we have to begin to put the hedge of protection around you, surround yourself with the word of God, that you will not be fooled by liars, cheaters, stealers, pastors, priests, bishops, evangelists, prophets, all these people saying they're walking in the gospel and all this other kind of stuff. You got to build yourself up a fortress that's surrounded with the word of God. This says have your loins or your, or your, uh, your, uh, or your pants uh, laced up or girded up or tightened with the belt of truth. God said you have to surround yourself. So David began to surround himself with a fortress and he began to build it up inward. So first you have to put up a resistance. That's what David was doing. He said I'm going to put up a resistance and then I'm going to build my spiritual insides up so that I would be able to recognize the lie from the pastor or the bishop. Or whoever it is talking to me, the man or the girlfriend or the lie or the job or the adultery or the money, whatever's trying to talk to me, I gotta be built up inside that I can be able to perceive the lie. Stay with me, y'all. Stay with me. I got two minutes. I'm, I promise you, I'm done. I made it to 2 Samuel. He said, He said, Listen to this, mom. Listen to this. He said, Build up your outside, put up a resistance or a fortress. Which is your shield of faith. And as you put up your shield of faith, if you stand there, one thing I learned about boxing was, or even singing. If you're a great singer, Elaine's a great singer. We got some singers in here with some talent. I know the girls, the, the Langford twins, they got some talent. I heard they can sing. Maybe they'll sing after church today. I'm not sure. But the one thing I do know is that when they tell you a great singer will sing what? From their belly, from the diaphragm, right? From the inside, from deep down inside. And you have a little small girl and she be singing to a whole 70,000 uh, 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 member crowd. Right? Because it's coming from the inside. So David said, put up the shield. Or David put up a fortress. And then he began to work from the inside. See, people don't want you to read the scriptures because they know you'll get set free. You'll leave that no good Negro that's all, we, all he does is want your body. You'll leave that woman that all she wants is for you to put it down. You got them size 13 shoes. She'll, guess what? She don't want you to read the scriptures to see you the righteousness of God through Christ. They don't want you to read that. Don't nobody want you to really read that. They don't really want, I'm just trying to, they don't really want you to read that. So David said, I'm going to begin to build it up from the shield inward. David said, I'm going to control my environment or my atmosphere by putting the hedge around me. By putting a hedge. You got to put a hedge around you. Say, but I'm almost done. I got... I have to expose because the enemy will always try to suppress you by making you think that you have to depend on people. I was with a gentleman yesterday, and he said, Mike, he said, I'm ready to give up my house, give up my car, and go live in a box. 
He said, I'm going to give up my house.